So, I went back to Afghanistan in 2011 to, thank you. These are my beautiful nieces over here, by the way. And uh, I dug in with Afghan youth, mostly uh, war orphans. Uh, I spent about a month there really getting a taste of what Afghanistan looks like from the other side of the gun. And I really understood the fear behind the trigger. I just didn't know what it felt like to be on the business end of the weapon. And there was a lot of things I noticed when I went back immediately that I didn't pick up the first three times I went there. Like, within a day of being there, I saw these beautiful mulberry trees all over the place. And I was very impressed. And I started to think about that. Oh my gosh, I didn't see a single mulberry tree the first three times I came to this country. I had, the, uh, my lenses were so fond with war that I, I just didn't. I bet I leaned up against the mulberry tree and took a nap while I was there and didn't even know it. So through the course of uh, processing what happened while I was over there, I talked to a lot of other Afghan vets, and they said that they'd like to go back too. Because some of what I experienced was very healing. It was good for my soul. What these boys did for me was, was amazing. I'm still trying to figure it out. So I came home last fall, and I said, Adam, I really need some help. I want to write an album of music about my experiences in Afghanistan and, and about PTSD, and we're going to use it as a fundraiser to take a group of Afghan vets back to Afghanistan. Because we want to use our stories and our struggle uh, as a method of payment for this healing process. So that's how Adam got involved in this. Mm -hmm. I, it's, it's true. Uh, I'd seen, I want to tell you something about Possum. I've known Possum for the better part of 10 years. But uh, in very short stints, I knew Possum in passing for a month or two, and we'd hang out where we had the best time, you know. And then three years would go by, I wouldn't see him. And we'd, we'd all of a sudden see each other again. Well, he'd be a whole other person. I mean, I'd be a whole other person too, you know. And, uh, and well, we'd hang out for a couple months, have the best time. And then, you know, a few more years would go by, and we get together. Well, that kept happening however many times. Well, this last time that I saw a possum, I was on the square. He comes, um, excuse me, Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> look, I t everybody, look, all right. I told myself I wasn't going to do that, and I already did it twice. <laughs> and I just started talking. Anyways, I saw the man on the square. <laughs> and I want to tell you something. He was a man. And, and he was a man that knew what he wanted in life, that knew what he needed to do in life, and was, uh, uh, I guess you could say, taking the bull by the horns. Uh, and it was the first time I'd ever seen him like that. And it was, uh, it was a beautiful experience to see the, all those different transformations through the better part of a decade, uh, and, and to see this, um, what he is now, and it's a very beautiful man. And he asked me, "Oh, hey, I got these songs I want to write." I said, "Yeah, man, anytime." You know, I was excited to hang out with him, and I didn't really think much about it. You know, oh yeah, we'll play some songs, we'll write some songs, and then when we went through it uh, through last winter, it was um, it changed my life as a songwriter, as an artist, and it changed my life on a very personal level. You know, I came into I came out of that a whole new man, a changed man. And uh, uh, it was a very beautiful experience to be involved in, I have to be honest with you. And very proud to have been involved in it, you know. Right. Thanks, Derek. Well, and I told, I told him earlier, I said, hey, listen, we gotta get together so we don't talk for five hours tonight, because we can talk for five hours, you know, on the mic. So here I'm already hogging it all. So go No, go, no, go. it's good. We, we intentionally didn't plan anything, so we could just go through it. Because there's some things we haven't talked about yet. We want to talk about them in front of a group of people so everyone gets to hear the power that went into this process and how it transformed us as men. Mm -hmm. So I met Adam. This album's titled Soldier's Heart, by the way, which is the Civil War term for post-traumatic stress disorder. And Adam and I met in a building down in Fort Smith called the Schoolhouse Apartments. 
-hmm. And it's this really big, beautiful building. It's pretty nice. It is very beautiful building. So one day I was down in uh, their apartment and uh, we, he said I play guitar and I was like, well, I'm trying to play banjo. Let's get together and play some music. And uh, so we did and that's the first place we played music. And uh, here we are now with this album, but, but uh, there's a really important part about that building. That building, the foundation of that building was used as a hospital during the Civil War. Whoa. And we actually didn't put all those pieces together until a car ride about a week ago. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly right. So this, uh, this first song, this is on the album, it's called uh, Jimmy Freeman. And my niece is going to join me for this one. Oh. Is that good? Okay. So this song's about it's about running into people in unlikely places.
Freddie Freeman from Arkansas. There wasn't more than 50 people on top of this mountain <laughs> on the border of Pakistan, and my next door neighbor's son from Danville, Arkansas, it's got about 2,000 people in it, happened to be up there. <laughs> Boy, they made fun of us. <laughs> Give JC another round of applause. I haven't seen Jimmy since that. He gave me his prize machete because he didn't know if he could take it back home with him. We were only crossing paths for about a week. I was going to be there for a week, and he was only going to be there for another another week. So it was a very strange run-in, but he gave me his big old machete, and uh, they call it an Arkansas toothpick, by the way. <laughs> if you don't know, I'm missing front teeth, so the joke is it's a knife big enough to pick your teeth. 